afternoon, and welcome to St. Rose of Lima for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. Jesus, you are the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and the peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give 
even the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go up therefore to the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. The hall was filled with guests, but when the king came to meet the guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. And the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, for there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The gospel of the Lord. Well, it's really nice to see all of you tonight on this beautiful day. I don't know if there are any of you at the Women's Club outdoor luncheon today. Yeah, they had a terrific event. Um, I actually forgot that it was happening today. And I drove by the church. And I was wondering, what is going on at St. Rose today that I don't know about? Um, and then it dawned on me, of course, 
at Saloma's Club having an outdoor luncheon. And it looked to me like there were a lot of people there. There were certainly a lot of cars. And they were here well, pretty early, late into the afternoon. And I thought it was just a brilliant idea to do something, to do anything, to get out of the house, to share food with others, to put their own food, um, have time to think and talk, and share friendship. The Women's Club is into some really uh, unique sort of L.L. Bean type of things. Uh, a high class Saturday morning, uh, coffee in downtown, one of the coffee shops the week before. Uh, today, the picnic. And, you know, that's not from the gospel today. But in many ways, it's from God. Because all afternoon, I've been talking to a variety of people, including our organist, Teresa, and others, Ernie, uh, uh, about what's going on. And it seems like after every meeting, every meeting we have in our parish this week, and last week and the week before, right up to at least February or March, at the end of our staff meeting, we always end up saying, so, so we really don't know what's going on. And while we're getting used to that feeling that we don't know what's going on, uh, for example, like what are we going to do by the Christmas time? What's going on? We don't, we don't know. We know there's going to be rules regarding the city. And I just think it's like an overwhelming experience. Um, what will we do? We can't accommodate people. I, I don't know if we can get out messages of different masses or how many masses. Um, I did propose to someone today an outdoor midnight mass. Um, and make a nice, good music. Warm clothing, short homily, and short mess. You have to, you have to have a brief mess. Uh, but what about everything else? Like the children, the schools, we're sort of waiting to plan things, youth ministry. Uh, every time we decide to do something, we're told, no, you can't do that. You can't have more than 10, you can't have more than 25. All of these things are very important, and it's very important for us as Catholics to set the bar and to do things the way they're supposed to be done and be careful of doing them. So I think today's was a very good example of a really, a really simple thing that turned out beautifully. Everyone was pleased, with very little effort, and it was good for everybody. And I think that's the way we have to think. I know it's about, I haven't counted how many are here right now, but it looks like there's more than the last couple of weeks. It looks. We're sort of all spread out, so I, I'm sure someone out there is counting and they'll tell me that the mess. Um, this image of God isn't doing well during this season either. Uh, so many people are asking the questions uh, about God. And that's a really good question. I ask it all, like, where are you? When are you going to show us what's next? When are you going to give us some insight to plan ahead. How are we going to do that? Where are we going to get from here to the next place to be? When will people more generously come back to church? We don't know. We can't plan for anything. Uh, we have decided that we're going to do the outdoor mass as long as the weather is permitted. So, but realistically, this is mid-October, so we don't expect it to be too long. Uh, and then we are thinking of adding on uh, another Mass, um, either the 11.30 or the 8. Um, how many of you would prefer the 8, by the way? Three, four? How many would prefer the 11.30? Really? Are you all sleepy? <laughs> yeah, I 11.30. Well, maybe, maybe both. Again, we can't plan because we don't know how many or who is going to be attending those masses. I love the first reading because it's from my favorite book of the Jewish scriptures, uh, uh, Isaiah. Isaiah is so beautiful. 
One of the beautiful lines in this verse that David just read to us was a very beautiful line. The Lord God will wipe away tears, the tears of every face. The Lord is caring for us. He actually wants to be that intimate with you, to wipe the tears from our eyes. That's as powerful as that view of the mountain, the great big mountains of the Far East, the Middle East. The mountains are an image of God. Why? Because of beauty, because of strength. We would almost say those mountains have character. And then occasionally humankind comes into that picture and builds its own mountains in front of the big one, obscuring the view of the mountain that belongs to God. That's happening today in our country. It's happening in our selfishness, in our refusal to listen to other people, always arguing. Worse, I think, in the election year, worse than anything, I think is always the lack of interest to be open to other points of view. People actually scream at that, don't they? They just scream at it. I don't want to hear you. you. Don't tell me anything. It's all fake news, as they say. It seems to me this is such an important election for all the candidates who are running for office. They all need our prayers. We prayed for President Trump last week. While he was still in the hospital, we should continue to pray for him. But we have to ask ourselves, if this selection is so important, am I making any effort at preparing for this election, or do I already know the way I want it? And that's it. It's always the same. But then, then you don't realize what's going on in another view. Someone else is right once in a while. I think we ought to at least be faithful for the privilege of voting to actually give it some attention that we can learn. <laughs> I read a brief story the other day, and I forgot his name. It's a very difficult name. An Austrian doctor, back in the turn of the century, 100 years ago. Um, a surgeon worked with the dirt poor in some of the worst locations of Europe. And he noticed that all the mothers were having difficulty with birth and losing lots of children. He couldn't figure out why. In some countries that was happening, and in other countries it never happened at all. He knew, he watched all the surgeons in the hospital uh, never move toward the sink and so on. But the vast majority of those surgeons never realized that dirty hands were bad for you. And that he know the surge was going right from, let's say, an emergency room or even a corpse, right up to a maternity ward where they would begin to touch their patients with their hands. And many of those patients died. When he suggested examining or doing a test on cleanliness of your hands, the other doctors said they never thought that dirt and water were needed, that you didn't have to clean your hands. Those were tough, difficult days. He was ridiculed, made fun of, because he was so silly in thinking that dirty hands would be the problem. Until he talked the hospital into going into a study. A study about cleanliness on your hands as a physician. And they discovered that with water and soap, Mother suddenly started dying. This Austrian doctor had exhausted all that he had to prove another learning experience. He said, no, 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 you must wash your hands. And we've been doing that today, aren't we? They made fun of him because he learned new things. He quit the practice of medicine and went to just a small hospital to nurse. But we can think of that. What he proved wasn't just that soap and water is healthy for you. He proved that it doesn't always have to be that way. That we can all grow. And everyone who thinks they know everything 
it's very often totally wrong. I think we should just ask God, the God who's also portrayed in this wedding feast today, God who cares for us and welcomes us, not the guard, not the king who threw the people out and said they had decent clothing. That's representing the other, the other, the opposite of God. Let's stand for our prayer for faithful. We have all our petitions and our needs and our worries and concerns that we lift up to the God who cares. For the church, that we may hear God's invitation to life and enter wholeheartedly into the banquet that God has prepared for us, we pray for the Lord. Lord our prayer. prayer. For full participation in the Eucharistic liturgy, that we may draw strength for our daily lives from our communion with Christ and one another in celebration each week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. prayer. For greater trust, that we may be confident in God's providence love that provides to all our needs, even during the challenging time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. prayer. For all who are ill, that God will ease their suffering return them to health, that they may experience God's abiding presence with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Evelyn, May, Barry, Rubishad, and Stanley Lott, for whom this Mass is offered. May they be raised up on the last day to live forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. Gracious and loving God, hear all the prayers we place before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus, now and forever.
St. Rose of Lima, and all the saints who always sing your praise, now we join with them and with all the angels and saints to adore you as we sing. Blessed hope 
the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our hope and our faith, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let's offer one another some sign of Christ's peace.
thing. For those of you that heard me last week, I know that you're eagerly awaiting my update for this event that's so exciting to take place here at Santa Rosa. This fall, we will once again be hosting a great event. We're going to call it Let Your Light Shine. It gives us all a chance to connect. And it begins on October 31st, and like I said, it's going to run through November 8th. And thanks to Teresa, the registration page is now up on the website. So go to St. Rose, St. Rose of Northboro, and you'll find it an easy link right there. But to start off, we're going to virtually be having a 5K to let our light shine. And the 5K, I've been told, is an office, is 3.2 miles, but you'll have nine days. You can register as an individual, with a friend, or even as your entire family, but we want you to create a team. In the end, no matter what, you're not going to be running alone. Let me show you. Happy Houston. Take Father Houston with you. So we look forward to uh, having you share some of the favorite places that you run and take them with you to share pictures with us. I'm confident that these that will be in the bag after you register, these are going to become collector's items. If you want, you can choose to uh, walk or run for a special cause. Um, let your light shine for somebody in particular. Could be cancer awareness, food insecurity, social injustices, or just simply the need for peace on earth that might be near to your heart. There'll be contests again this year for all of the events, but specifically for the 5K, it's going to be based on age categories, most team spirit, and some new category that's kind of exciting, and that's called the craziest race outfits. So remember to share your photos with us. There'll be an email link to send in your way. And make sure in those photos that you include Happy Houston, because this is going to be exciting. The more pictures, the better, and we know it's going to be a lot of fun. So in addition to the 5K, we're going to have a scavenger hunt throughout Northboro on Saturday the 31st. You'll be provided luminary bags, an opportunity to share a thought and prayer for someone or some cause close to your heart that we'll be praying for on All Souls Day's Mass. Monday, November 2nd, we're going to have trivia night, be it through a Zoom meeting, but it'll be fun. Tuesday is a family meal and a food collection thought process. Wednesday is a Thanksgiving prayer, just being thankful. We want to hear from you. We want you to share your family prayer that you have. Come up with a nice Thanksgiving prayer, and be sure to send in a family picture that also includes Happy Houston. Thursday night is very exciting because that's the virtual bingo night. And it's going to be led by our fabulous and most enthusiastic bingo leader, Jane McEwen. All those that are registered in this event will get their own bingo cards. Friday, November 6th, it's an at-home pumpkin painting party. We will be providing the pumpkins that will be brought here to St. Rose to be on display on the next mass the next day. Saturday, November 2nd at 2 o'clock, very exciting. And join us on Facebook Live for a living rosary to be presented right here at St. Rose. And then on Sunday, November 8th at our outdoor mass, in addition to all the pumpkins being on display, we're going to announce our contest winners of all of the events. So as you can see, there's a lot planned. And then, even if you participate in just one or all of the events this week, we're going to ask again for everybody to please register, take advantage of it, go online and fill out the registration, or call the rectory if you prefer, and we'll take your information that way, make sure that you're registered. Everybody will receive a shiny light bag filled with all the items for the entire week. In closing, there's been a great response from a request to volunteers, and as volunteers, you'll be receiving an email this week as to the assignments and the fun that we can all have together. If you still want to volunteer, we have room. Just contact St. Rose and let us know, and we'll get you on the volunteer list. Very simple, easy task need to be completed. So again, I thank you for your time. Look forward to this great event, and have a great week. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you humbly that as you nourish us with this sacrament, the same sacrament that comes from your precious holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us shares in the divine nature. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace and bring God's love to all the world. Amen. Have a wonderful holiday weekend, everybody.